Meantime, the release of secret cabinet documents in Queensland reveals the first warnings to government about climate change. 1989 was also a year of huge political upheaval, which saw the reigning National Party crumble and Labor's Wayne Goss triumph. State political reporter Josh Bavis has the story. 1989 was a year of great political change in Queensland. It was the year that saw three different premiers and Labor's revival after decades in opposition. It's one of possibly the two or three most pivotal years in Queensland political history. But it was also the year that the Queensland Cabinet was warned about climate change. Under Premier Mike Ahern, Cabinet agreed to spend $1.5 million on a series of studies to better prepare the state's economy and environment after hearing about moves abroad to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The submission warns that failing to do so could unnecessarily increase the state's economic vulnerability. But as Mike Ahern made moves to reform government in the wake of the Fitzgerald inquiry, his reign would be cut short, rolled by colleague Police Minister Russell Cooper. I don't think it's bad for the party at all. I think it's very healthy. I just decided uh, with my wife that we would go and do what was ours to do. And uh, if there was a cost like that to pay, well, then uh, we'd pay it and we'd go and do something else if need be. Weeks later, under Russell Cooper, the National Party suffered its historic election loss. Labor's Wayne Goss, the victor. The victory belongs to you. Premier Goss started his reforms from the top down, beginning with the introduction of a cabinet handbook. It's still used to guide and assess the conduct of ministers, even as recently as this year. A national pilot strike brought Queensland's tourism sector to a grinding halt in 1989. Brisbane's Ansett and Australian Airlines terminals were virtually deserted today. And a push from Premier Ahern would see the state's first daylight saving trial. So let's give it a try this time. I hate it. I don't want to change. I'm 94 and I don't want to change. While the time zones might have remained steadfast that year, it was a different story for those in the seats of power. Josh Bavis, ABC News, Brisbane.